Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I wanna say welcome and good evening. And um, we're so glad you joined us for the webinar this evening. Um, this is actually the first webinar that financial aid is participating in. So we're really excited. Um, we wanna do recognize though that we understand that these are challenging times. So I wanted you to be aware that our staff is working remotely, um, but we look forward to being back on the hilltop. Um, and we wanna assure that you understand how to finance your education here at St. Edwards. Um, as I move through the presentation, if you have any questions, you can click the Q&A icon and I'd be glad to answer all your questions at the end. Again, just remember that your microphone and video have been turned off. My name is Jennifer Beck and I'm the Senior Director of Student Financial Aid here at St. Edwards University. Um, with me monitoring is Dave Brolauer. He is the Director of Transfer Admissions. Um, and so again, we're going to be here. We're going to answer all your questions. Um, again, if we go through the slide, anything that you would like clarification on, just please click the Q&A icon and um, put your question in. So here's really what we want you to know about paying for college and specifically here at St. Edwards. Um, we really want you to know that we invest generously in your success. Um, you're awarded for both merit and athletic achievement. Um, that is awarded typically through the admissions application and students are notified of their merit scholarship through a notification through admissions. Um, but filing a FAFSA is always worth your time. Um, here at St. Edwards, um, we recognize the fact that it does take um, you know, several minutes to complete the free application for federal student aid. And we wanna ensure that we're giving you the best financial aid package and offer that we can make you. And so we consider every student for grant funds. So we wanna make sure that students are filing the free application for federal student aid. And while our priority deadline is passed, we still will um, consider you for grant funds. So we encourage you to go ahead and do the free application for federal student aid. And then making the right fit decision saves you money. Um, we wanna make sure that you understand that, that the financial aid package is not just for the first year, but it is for the entire four years. And we really want you to have an understanding of what that decision is. Um, because coming to school for two years and then leaving and starting over can really um, put a lot of additional burden onto the student. So we really want to make sure that the right fit and the right decision is there at the beginning. So when we talk about fit and value, what do we mean by that? Um, and so I know we have some parents on the, the, the webinar tonight and we have um, some, some students themselves that are on the webinar. So the question is, you know, will this experience inspire the best in you? You know, coming to St. Ed's and having the, um, the curriculum and the social experience, is that um, what's gonna make you happy? You know, a lot of times um, students are concerned that they want to be able to be able to make friends and find a purpose while they're here. And so we want to make sure that you're able to have those connections. Um, does the university offer transformative experiences? So we want to make sure, you know, here at St. Ed's, the, the one thing that I hear from my own student employees in my office is when I ask them, what's the best thing that you like about St. Ed's? They really say the classroom setting. You know, they say that they're, they don't feel like they're in a lecture, that they really feel like their professor is someone that they can connect with and show how what they're learning in the classroom pertains to life outside the classroom. So life beyond the hilltop in their careers. Um, you know, we do a lot of research at the undergraduate level with our professors, and so that's available for that experience for the student. Um, does the location offer ways to grow and learn? You know, we love the fact that we're right here in Austin, and we have um, all the, the benefits that Austin has to offer for us. Um, the, the connections that we have with the community here, um, the businesses here, we want to make sure that you have that connection in order to be able to transform your experience in the classroom to um, a career and life after St. Ed's. Um, so that a university that intentionally matches you on all these values is always worth the investment that you make into it. And we do understand that this is an investment. So 
The Office of Student Financial Services wants to partner with you on this investment personally. And this is more than ever before. You know, we want you to be aware that we're here and we're connected for you. We want any, any question that you might have, we have a, I have a team of Student Financial Services Advisors that's here to help you understand the process and what it means for you individually. Because my favorite word in financial aid is it depends. And every situation and everybody's situation is unique. And so you really want to be able to make sure that you're connecting with the student financial services advisor and that they're explaining to you exactly what the financial picture looks like for you. So scholarships at St. Edwards, um, we're very proud of the fact that we have 80% of our freshmen and 88% of our transfer students for this past fall received scholarships and grants. And as an institution, we offered a total of $88 million in funding. So we invest heavily in our students and their success. The average freshman scholarship was a little over 28,000 and our average transfer scholarship is a little over 23,000. So where are the sources of financial aid come from? Um, again, St. Edwards is the scholarships and grants is the largest percentage of our financial aid package that we offer. But we do receive funding from both the federal and state. We also receive private sources. We get many outside scholarships for our students that we process through the Student Financial Services Office. Um, and we have a slide moving forward that talks a little bit more about outside scholarships. But Civic organizations and churches and many times the employers also will assist with the financing of your education. So it's really a myriad of many different sources coming together to help meet your need and meet your cost. Again, we take great pride in our financial aid counselors or another term that floats around as advisor, but a financial aid counselor is going to be there to guide you through every step of the way. From the time that you came in as an inquiry that you were just interested in St. Edwards um, to beyond the hilltop, we assign you a financial aid advisor through your entire career here at St. Ed's. We keep you with the same advisor who's really going to guide you. Um, we want to consider all your needs and you may have different needs as you move throughout your, your time here at St. Edwards. Coming in as a freshman, you might have very different needs financially as a junior. Um, you may have circumstances that are different. Um, and so you want to make sure you're connecting with the advisor. Um, we also provide online financial literacy tools and we work very closely with our Student Success Center um, to make sure that you have the necessary information to be able to be financially sound. Um, some of these are offered in person and some of them are offered through webinars. Um, we also want to help plan and solve any of your college financing options. So um, we're going to talk a little bit later about the financial aid award letter and what we would call the bottom line, the out-of-pocket cost, and we really want to have those conversations with you about that. So this is what the financial aid award notification looked like. This is our, um, our award packet, as well as um, a sample of an award letter. Um, in the packet, it goes through several different details in the packet about um, financing your education, payment plan options, a little bit about campus employment, how to maintain your eligibility for financial aid, and the next steps to the process. In addition, there's a letter in there. It's a, it's a welcome letter from me. And it's basically explaining that, again, we want to make sure that you know who your advisor is and you know how to contact your advisor. But on the actual award letter itself, we break it down to show your actual cost, the tuition and fees, the room and board. That's considered your billable charges. That's what you would see when our director of student accounts sends out the bill, typically in June for the, for the um, fall term. Um, but the tuition and fees and then the room and board, and that is an average room and board. Um, books and supplies and personal and transportation expenses are something that you need to consider in the cost, but they're not actually something that gets put on the student bill. So your total cost consists of both billable, which are indirect and direct costs. Now your estimated grants and scholarships, 
Um, again, the merit scholarship component, you, you may have received a letter from the admissions office congratulating you on the merit scholarship. But again, that's one facet of the entire financial aid package. So you'll have your merit scholarship. If you were eligible for any federal grants, um, as well as institutional grants would be part of the grant section of the, um, of the award offer. Um, and then we get into other types of aids, which you may decide you want to accept or decline, but we always want to make sure that you're aware that those are offered. And that is the, the federal loan programs that are available. And um, while we never like to encourage students to take on debt, we understand the reality that some students choose to do so. And we really want to make sure that you understand the loans and that, you know, they are manageable upon repayment. Um, they're, the, they're the most unique loan that a student borrows and that they're not based on current income, but the income that you make at the time you leave school and you graduate and that you're in your career. And there are so many repayment options that are available to students nowadays that no student should be in default on their student loan or not in a good repayment status. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing all the financial literacy surrounding that early on. So every year student acknowledges exactly what their financial aid picture looks like and what is that total out of pocket cost for the family. Um, and again, a lot of the questions that the counselors and my end field is those out-of-pocket costs that we might not be aware of. Um, we might not be aware that um, you're receiving an outside scholarship. Um, and so that has to be taken into consideration. You, a parent may want to borrow a parent loan to help with the cost, or a student may want to borrow an additional private loan to help with the cost. But we also have payment plan options that are available for families. Um, it allows you to take a balance due and divide it into four equal installments. Um, and so that also is available. We also want to make sure that you understand about comparing financial aid offers. And um, I should mention, and I probably should have mentioned this at the start, that all of this information is available also on our website. So you can find all the links and all the tools and resources directly on our site. But this comparing your financial aid offer really lets you look at the aid that you're receiving at St. Edwards and really doing an apples to apples comparison of other aid offers that you have been receiving. And so you can use this chart to go through and analyze and make those decisions and really have a conversation at that, this point, you know? I mean, if you're going through it and you realize that, you know, cost is a factor and you're confused, please reach out. We wanna have those, those conversations with you. Now, sometimes there are special circumstances that can only be done by a financial aid administrator. This is another reason to be in close contact with us. Um, any sort of loss of income due to job loss or force reduction in work hours, or maybe there was a one-time earning that isn't something that will occur again and again. Um, on occasion, we have um, parents that file a FAFSA at the time they're married and now they're divorced or separated. And so their financial picture looks very different. Um, loss of income due to a death of a spouse or parent. Um, unusual medical or dental expenses. I've had some scenarios where we've had um, parents or even students that are experiencing high out-of-pocket medical prescriptions that they have to pay for. And we can take those into consideration. Um, asset change is a little unique because at the time that you file the free application for federal student aid, you indicate your assets and we know that assets can fluctuate with the market. But if you withdraw a particular asset and you're able to document that you used it for something, we're able to take that into consideration. And then financial loss and hardship due to um, natural disasters. We've had some situations with um, Hurricane Harvey and the fires in um, California. Um, currently, right now, everybody is experiencing um, uh, the coronavirus situation, and we're still seeking guidance from the Department of Ed on the resources and tools that would be available for students for that. But that is something we actively work closely with and to make sure that we're able to assist our students. Um, 
but please do reach out to the counselor to discuss further. I will tell you that some of these situations does not warrant necessarily an increase in, in a financial aid offer, but sometimes they do. And so if you never reach out and have that conversation from the start, you never know exactly what sort of revision to a financial aid award offer that we can make. So please reach out. So the scoop on outside scholarships, I will tell you that they are a little bit a needle in a haystack to find. Um, if you've tried to go out, you may have used, I said, check these out. These are the top three that we know students are really successful with earning outside scholarships. Um, we do provide, and I put it down in the left corner on our billing and financial aid tab, a scholarship search site. It lists um, numerous different outside scholarships that we know were successful for students. Um, because we've received funding on their behalf. We've seen scholarships range anywhere from just a $500 outside scholarships all the way up to the full cost of attendance. Um, so it varies in the amounts and some students receive multiple scholarships. I have a student that has five different small scholarships, but when you total it up, it totals $2,000 and that's really helping them. Um, but it does require some work sometime on the student's part, you know, doing the application, sometimes doing an essay, um, but pay attention to the application deadlines because application deadlines vary on these outside scholarships. Any outside scholarship worth applying for should be free. There are numerous scams out there. And so you just want to make sure you're going to a reputable site. Um, we have some links on our website, how you can identify if it's a reputable site. And you want to check with each school on how they handle outside scholarships. Um, at St. Edwards, we try to put the outside scholarship, in most cases we are successful at it, on top of the financial aid award um, so that it doesn't impact any of the grant funds. Um, but they do have other institutions that actually will reduce aid once they know about outside scholarship funds. So I think that's an important question to ask when you're doing the apples to apples comparison is if I get an outside scholarship, what is the impact on my financial aid award? Um, some important dates. Um, again, we hopefully you've completed the free application for federal student aid, but if you haven't, it's not too late. We want you to make sure you go ahead and do it. And please be sure to include our school code 003621. Um, sometimes we get calls from families that are like, I included, uh, you know, I, you never got my FAFSA. And it's because um, you, you can list up to, I think it's right now about 10 schools. And we just want to make sure that you've included us, us as a school to receive your FAFSA data. So that's one thing you can check. Um, and then again, as soon as you decide, you can confirm your place in the class by submitting the enrollment deposit. For incoming freshmen, um, our date is June 1st. Um, and I provided some links here. I'm not sure if you're a parent on the line, you may not be as familiar with these tasks. These are tasks that are available through the My Hilltop portal. Um, your son and daughter can log into that and actually go through and using several different tasks um, are available to even students that are not actually enrolled yet. And one of them is the make your enrollment deposit. The other one is submit your financial aid paperwork. Um, when we do send out a award notification, we also a few days later send an email letting you know that the financial aid award is available for you to view through the portal, through the My Hilltop portal. Um, and so there's actually a view my financial aid award tasks. Um, and many of you probably have already gone online and viewed it um, that way. Um, but also about 40% of students get randomly selected for a process called verification which means we're required to review documents in order to ensure the financial aid award that we made is accurate. And so we do ask that you submit the financial aid paperwork through the upload through the portal. If you've recently mailed us the documents via snail mail, um, we do ask that you go ahead and submit them and upload them using the portal. That's going to be the fastest way that we can retrieve the documents and that we can be in communication with you on that data. And again, we do ask that you complete it by May 1st. Um, we want to ensure that we have everything completed and in so that we have the most accurate award made available to the student.
Um, it, we do have a cutoff date, we like to say of June 1st. We really want it by June 1st because by that point, we want to make sure that all the paperwork is in so when the funds can credit to the student account in August, we have no delay in doing that. And so we welcome you to the class once you make the deposit. Um, it does secure your place in the, in the class and you're able to start the communication regarding our resident hall sign up and roommate assignments. It also allows students to get connected with their future classmates. Um, it will allow our incoming freshmen to lock in a preferred orientation session. And our transfer students then can also start the advising appointment process, which allows you to get connected with a student success coach and actually have a success coach talk to you about advising. We meet with you about career and professional development. Um, and then we also connect you with student financial services. So we, again, I'm going back to the investment piece and why is St. Edwards a worth while investment for you. I think these are some of the key things that either as a parent or a student that, that you want to make sure you're asking yourself, you know, know what's important to you in going to a school. Is a small class size with the one-on-one the -on -one connection with the professor important? Um, is the experiences that are being offered through the student activities something you're um, interested in, all the clubs that are available. One unique thing about St. Edwards with the clubs is that we do allow students to, you know, create their own club. Maybe there's not one specific club that they're in, they, they have some unique characteristic and they want to develop their own club. And we have um, a great setup where a student can develop their own club. Um, seek firsthand perspectives. Now more than ever, you know, get on online and take a look at the, the videos that are being provided by students and even from parents. Parents, there's, there's videos out there where you can see what it's like as a parent of a St. Edwards student. So really seek those firsthand perspectives. Um, make a plan. Um, nothing's worse than having a student come on the first day of class and don't, they don't understand how they're going to pay the remainder of their bill. We really want to make sure before you, you, know, you come to, to class and you, you step foot on campus that you really have a plan in place for the financing because it is important. Um, compare your apples to apples. Understand what the bottom line is. Understand any other fees that might be assessed in the, in the tuition and fee component. Um, really take a look at the, what is the, the net price? What is the amount you're actually going to have to pay? Um, borrow wisely, you know, only borrow what you need. Um, if at any point, you know, you decide that you, you don't need as much of the loan that you borrowed, we can return the funds on your behalf. Or if you decide you want to decline the loans and now you decide you need them, we can reinstate them as long as we're in the enrollment period. Um, but understand, you know, the value, looking at the net price, looking at the, the, the value that you're getting for coming to St. Ed's and really seek our advice. Um, we want to make sure you're connected. A lot of times the financial aid advisors have been the point of contact from the very start. And so we get several questions from families that really have nothing to do with financial aid. Um, but we're there as a tool and a resource to connect them to the area that they need in order to be successful. This is our Meet Your Financial Services Counselor webpage. Um, again, our staff is monitoring emails. We're retrieving all of our voicemails. Um, the advisors can set up a meeting with you either through Google Chat or Zoom. Um, we're also able to give you a call. We're here to help and we'd be glad to set up a specific time and a meeting that works with your convenience um, to make sure that you know that we're here and that we're available. So, I just want to reiterate, I'm so thankful that you joined this webinar tonight. I'm going to get to the Q&As. And remember, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the Q&As. Um, you can always reach us via seu.finaid at stedwards.edu. That's our main email line, and we are 
looking at that and responding to students accordingly. Um, you may be also interested in learning about the virtual tours of our campus. Um, and so those are up and available as well. And um, we're really excited that you're, um, you're considering St. Edwards. And if you've already decided to come here, we're, we're so happy to see you on the hilltop this fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to the Q and A's. Okay, how does outside scholarships affect the financial aid package? Um, as I spoke earlier, we really try to put the, the outside scholarships on top of your current financial aid award offer. The only time that we wouldn't be able to do that is if the value of the scholarship is meeting like the cost of attendance. And a great example would be we have some Gates scholars and Gates covers everything. And so in that case, um, we have to make adjustments to the financial aid award to allow for that Gates scholarship. But in most cases, um, if you get a 500 or if you get a $2,000 scholarship, that's on top of your financial aid award. But if you wanna know your specific situation, please go ahead and reach out to our financial aid advisors and we'd be glad to go over your specific situation. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad you were able to join us. Um, I had trouble accessing the My Hilltop account and I've made my decision to enroll in St. Edwards, but I'm a little worried I will not meet the May 1st deadline because I got selected for FAFSA verification. Will my financial aid be affected if I cannot file the documents by May 1st? No, it will not. Um, the, the enrollment deposit is separate from financial aid. We're gonna continue to work with you in financial aid to clear up your verification and to clear up your documents. Um, we like to have that done. Again, typically at June, July, as long as you get it in by that point, you're still real secured. We just really hate to see documents coming in in August because we're so close to when we start dispersing all the financial aid to your student account to the bill. So we want to have all those documents ahead of time so that we can secure that that's a really smooth process. Um, are the same federal loans offered yearly? You do have to file the free application for federal student aid every year. And we do um, outreach attempts to make sure students know that on October 1st, the FAFSA is ready for you to renew. You'll get a notification by the federal government that tells you to renew. You'll get an email from our office telling you to renew. And we also do several setups out in our, um, our Ragsdale Center um, right outside. We set up um, work sessions so that students know it's time for you to renew your FAFSA application. Now, the first year when you're a freshman, the maximum that we're able to offer is 5,500 in a federal direct loan. And that's really regardless where you go in the country. That's the, that's the amount that's federally regulated. You may see, if you have financial need, you may see some of those funds are subsidized, meaning the government's covering the interest on the loan while you're in school. And then there's an unsubsidized loan where the interest is starting to accrue. Um, and that's for students that have no financial need. So you may see a difference there on the type of direct loan, but 5,500 is the maximum as a freshman. It's 6,500 as a sophomore and 7,500 as a junior and senior. Um, if your parent applies for a parent loan and is denied a parent loan, those amounts can differ as well. Um, you, it increases the amount that you can borrow in the um, unsubsidized loan. Um, but again, um, that's the, that, I think I answered your question there on that. Um, you can also, if you want to see specifics about student loans, go to studentloans.gov. And that also goes into all the um, entrance and exit counseling that's provided by the federal government when it comes to um, making sure you understand your rights and responsibilities as a student loan borrower. I'm considering deferring my admission until the spring semester. Will this affect my financial aid package? Um, first of all, what we want to make sure that you do is um, talk with your admissions counselor and it'll be a conversation with admissions and financial aid. Um, most of the time we can um, revise your financial aid to a spring only award. Um, it wouldn't be the full amount that you would get for fall and spring, but we would do the spring proration. But I would start with um, reaching out to the financial services advisor so that we can take a look at that. Where can I apply for the government loans to pay 
my out-of-pocket cost. Okay, um, there is a link on our website to alternatives to financing, and it basically gives you information pertaining to private alternative loan lenders that would help with the cost of education. Because remember, as I mentioned, 5,500 is the maximum the federal government will offer. Um, so at that point, we start looking at private alternative loans or a parent loan to help offset the cost. Um, but your financial aid advisor will work with you to, to guide you through that process. So if you have any confusion as you're going on to the website and going through that process, um, we can set up a time to help you go step by step through that. Mm, let's see here. Is the amount listed on the financial aid award letter for the direct unsubsidized loan, the amount, exact amount you will get. Yes, it should be the exact amount that we're eligible to package for you. Yes, um, a, like I said, a freshman, it would be 5,500. And for a sophomore, it'd be 6,500. And junior and senior, 7,500. If you do see something less that's on your award offer, I would ask that you reach out to your advisor um, the only time I've seen where it would be less is if you had um, numerous scholarships and outside scholarships where we had to reduce the loan because you were um, getting up to your entire cost of education. And remember, cost of education looks at tuition and fees, room and board, books, travel, miscellaneous expenses. So both billable and non-billable charges. Does the grant awarded change each year? We try to keep you at the same level of funding every year. So as long as you do the free application for federal student aid um, and you meet satisfactory academic progress um, and you submit everything on the deadline date, we keep that grant funding the exact amount. Now we do understand that there may be some scenarios where you have special circumstances in subsequent years. So you will wanna reach out to an advisor to discuss those circumstances, but we do keep the same grant level. And it's the same merit level as well. But you do need to make sure that you're looking at the requ renewal requirements for your merit scholarship, which typically is a 2.5, and the, the, the rest of the financial aid package, which is typically a 2.0 cumulative GPA. And you've gotta be completing at least 75% of the courses in which you attempt. So if you take 12 hours, you'd have to complete nine hours to be successful. But we do always have, the student always has the right to appeal. Um, and so if for some reason after the first semester, they, they find that they're not doing well, the second semester, the aid would stay as is. It would be at the end of the spring that we would review all the renewal requirements and we would be communicating with you regarding the tools you would need to be successful to come back for the following semester. If due to credits, I get ahead and start my second year instead of the freshman, will the amount of my financial aid be reduced? Your amount won't be reduced. In fact, your loan eligibility would go up um, because once your credits all get reviewed, if the registrar's office considers you a sophomore, then we would be able to package you for additional loan funds. Um, and sometimes we see that between the fall and the spring semester. At the end of the fall, the student increases classification and they come meet with an advisor and they're able to increase the loan eligibility that they have. How are grants distributed? Do the grants only cover tuition or room and board or do they get distributed between both room, board and tuition? Um, the grants, if you're referring to the St. Edwards grant that's available, that gets looked at based on all of your costs. So when we start putting together a financial aid package, we look at the merit award, we look at the federal grant funds that are coming in, then we start looking at the St. Edwards grant, as well as all the other programs that could help meet the rest of your cost. And the grants are distributed um, fall and spring semester. So they're split evenly between the two terms. And so when you get that first um, pre-bill that's sent from our um, bursar's office, they'll actually show you all of your billable costs and all of your estimated credits that would be applied. Um, so you can exactly see what that bottom line is. 
Um, are the students chosen for verification other than submitting the 2021 household verification form, the verification of student income, the 2018 non-tax filer, are there any other documents I could, should concern myself with? Well, you sound like you got it pretty much covered. Um, that's most of the verification that's being requested are those forms. Um, but again, I would use the, um, the review my requirements portal through the My Hilltop portal, the task that's available and click through it. And you'll go online and you'll be able to see exactly what we've received, what's complete and what's still pending out there. Now, if you think you've submitted something and it's not showing that we've received it, please reach out to the advisor um, because we are retrieving documents daily and we're actually logging them into our system and reviewing them. So I'd encourage you to reach out to, um, to the advisor to ensure that we've received all the documents. But we do ask that you submit them through our online portal. It's, um, it's a secured portal. We prefer not to get the documents sent to the individual advisor via email. We really would prefer that you send them through the portal. Let me see here. Um, one of the other questions that came up, let me just pull this up. Um, what are the options for the meal plan? Um, I want to make sure everybody knows that the, the meal plan information is available on our website. We have several different options for a meal plan. Um, if you've selected a meal plan and later on before school starts, you realize I, sh I should have selected a lower meal plan and not the higher meal plan. You can always request a lower meal plan before the school semester starts. And if you're a commuter coming onto campus, we also have those meal plans available for you as well as a smaller meal plan available for just $175 that's available that you can set up for. Um, how do I set up a payment plan? Um, students can sign up for this option through the Billing Center link. It's on the My Hilltop portal. There's a task for the Billing Center and you can set up that payment plan there. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, Is presidential distinguished scholarship based on maintaining a certain GPA or is it only for incoming freshmen? That presidential scholarship is for incoming freshmen. You can view all of the scholarships that are available on the, the website. Um, if you go to the admissions website and financial aid and you type in undergraduate, you'll see the new freshmen and you'll see all the scholarships that are available there. Um, and that is available to freshmen, but we do have transfer scholarships that are available as well. So if you, uh, once you apply through the application process, every student is reviewed for merit-based scholarships and the notification would come again through the admissions acceptance. But then when you get your financial aid offer, um, we also include it there. The room and board is average. Where can I get details about specific room rates? Um, you can get details about the specific roommates online. Um, you can go to our portal under the cost. You can actually see um, all the, the different residence halls and all the costs that are associated with those residence halls. Again, if you want to get specific on right now, like what does my bottom line look like, the award offer letter is pretty accurate because it does give the average room and board, but our financial aid advisors are also available to do a cost estimate sheet for you, which lets you individually, once you know what your room and board is, um, it'll allow you to create kind of like a pre-bill. So we call it the pre-bill before the pre-bill. So it's a, it's a cost estimate sheet and uh, the advisor would be glad to provide that to you as well. Um, what accommodations are provided for students with disabilities? Um, we do recommend you contact the student disability office directly. They're gonna work with you and make sure you have the tools that you need to be successful. Um, if you once working with the um, disability office, if a student is on an approved modified course load, they're taking less hours, 
Um, we will work with them in financial aid and prorate your financial aid award to accommodate this reduction. I'm a veteran and I want to use my benefits. Um, great question. Dustin Knoll is our Veterans and Military Affairs Coordinator and he's going to be glad to answer any questions that you might have. We actually do have a Veterans Affairs page. If you just type in Veterans Affairs, it, it'll pull up on stedwards.edu. Um, but he's also just at D-N-O-L-L, -L, Noll at stedwards.edu. Um, he's also available through our Meet Your Counselor site, um, and he'd be glad to connect with you. I'm getting a lot of thank yous. Thank you all so much. Due to out-of-pocket costs for sophomore, junior, and senior different from freshman year? It could. Um, you know, what we take a look at is we take a look at each year. Um, tuition could increase. Typically, we, we try to keep it low. The, the, the board and the cabinet work together to, to keep costs down for students. Um, but we do take a look at the financial aid award, and we do take, um, let you know exactly what that bottom line is going to look like from year to year. And we will take into consideration any special circumstances. So, and also I, I should mention that I always tell students just because that first year they came in, they didn't qualify for any outside scholarships, doesn't mean that in subsequent years, they shouldn't go back to those same websites and reapply because now that they are a sophomore, junior or senior and they have credit hours and they're in a particular major, sometimes it opens up different scholarship eligibility outside scholarship eligibility. So you'd wanna go back to those same sites because I have seen students be successful at that. But yes, we can actually put together, you know, an estimate on a financing plan for the next, you know, two years, three years. We, your counselor can work with you on that as well. Well, I, I'm getting a lot of thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate y'all joining my webinar this evening. Um, I thanks to my, my moderator, Dave um, Braylauer from admissions. Um, he's been providing me some technical support that I really appreciate. And again, um, I would just encourage you, please contact us. We're here. We're here to help you. And um, we want to make this process as easy for you as possible. So thank you so much. And I hope everyone stays healthy and have a safe and, and great evening. Thank you.